The majority of animals more complex than jellyfish and other cnidarians are split into two groups, the protostomes and deuterostomes, the latter of which contains chordates. Fossils of one major deuterostome group, the echinoderms, are quite common from the start of the Cambrian. Metasprigino is interpreted as a chordate, as it shows signs of a heart, arteries, gill filaments, a tail, a neural cord with a brain at the front end and possibly eyes, although it also had short tentacles round its mouth. Pico is also regarded as a primitive chordate. On the other hand, fossils of early chordates are very rare, since invertebrate chordates have no bones or teeth, and only one has been reported for the rest of the Cambrian. Hycoichthys and Milocan minio are regarded as fish. Placement of this group among the jawless vertebrates is a matter of dispute. While today enough fossil diversity is known to make a close relationship among the ostracoderms unlikely, this has muddied the issue of the hyperoarchia's closest relatives. The last common ancestor of lampreys appears to have been specialized to feed on the blood and body fluids of other fish after metamorphosis, most of modern lampreys feed by boring into the flesh of other fish to suck their blood. Hagfish are long and vermiform, and can exude copious quantities of a milky and fibrous slime or mucus from some 100 glands or invaginations running along their flanks. It can feed upon and often even enter and eviscerate the bodies of dead and dying, injured sea creatures in sea floor. It has the ability to absorb dissolved organic matter across the skin and gill, which may be an adaptation to a scavenging lifestyle. Canodonts are extinct agnathan chordates resembling eels. For many years, they were known only from tooth-like microfossils found in isolation and now are called canodont elements. Knowledge about soft tissues remains limited. Their teeth have been interpreted as filter-feeding apparatuses, filtering plankton from the water and passing it down the throat. The lateral position of the eyes makes it unlikely that canodonts were active predators. The preserved musculature suggests that some promisum was efficient cruisers, but incapable of bursts of speed. Arandaspis had no fins, its only method of propulsion was the use of its horizontally flattened tail. As a result, it probably swam in a fashion similar to a modern tadpole. The fossils show extensive shielding of the head. Many had hypocycle tails in order to generate lift to increase ease of movement through the water for their armored bodies, which were covered in dermal bone. They also had sucking mouth parts and some species may have lived in fresh water. Most pteraspidomorphs were marine, but lived very near to the shore, in lagoons and deltas. Some groups are thought to have been freshwater dwelling. They were certainly bottom dwellers, as shown by traces of abrasion of the ventral surfaces of their head shields.
Drypanas piece was a flattened creature with a heavily armored body, superficially ray-like in appearance. Its mouth faced upwards. Unlike most other heterostrichans, which had downward facing mouths, Though lacking fins other than its lobed tail, Teraspes is thought to have been a good swimmer thanks to stiff, wing-like protrusions derived from the armored plates over its gills. This, along with the horn-like rostrum, made it very streamlined in shape, a perfect quality for a good swimmer. The bony scales of the Thelodont group, as the most abundant form of fossil, are also the best understood, and thus most useful. The scales were formed and shed throughout the organism's lifetimes, and quickly separated after their death. Most Thelodonts were considered deposit feeders, but more recent studies have shown that several species were active swimmers and thus more pelagic. A large variety of species in particular preferred reef ecosystems. Furcacorda was deep water jawless vertebrate, based on sediment in fillings of its fossil, gives credence to the evolutionary development of stomach before jaws. Anaspida were classically regarded as the ancestors of lampreys. Anaspids were small marine agnathans that lacked a heavy bony shield and paired fins, but have a striking highly hypocycal tail. They first appeared in the early Silurian, and flourished until the early Devonian, when they disappear from the fossil record. Galespida is another extinct taxon of jawless marine and freshwater fish. The name is derived from Gale, the Latin word for helmet, and refers to their massive bone shield on the head. Galespida lived in shallow, freshwater and marine environments during the Silurian and Devonian times in what is now southern Asia. The opening appears to have served both the olfaction and the intake of the respiratory water similar to the nasopharyngeal duct of hagfishes. The Eugalespids underwent a diversification event. By the time the Wenlock Epoch transitioned into the Ludlow Epoch, all of the Eugalespids were extinct. They lived from the Wenlock, and were fairly long-lived, especially the genus Eugalespis. Peacheriaspis vaguely resembled the Osteostraci, though neither are considered to be close relatives. The head shield extends posteriorly to form a long abdominal division which probably reached the anal region. Osteostraci were probably relatively good swimmers, possessing dorsal fins, paired pectoral fins, and a strong tail. The shield of bone covering the head formed a single piece, and so presumably did not grow during adult life. However, the way in which the bone was laid down makes it possible to examine the imprints of nerves and other soft tissues. This reveals the presence of complex sensory organs in the sides and upper surface of the head, which may have been used to sense vibrations. Because its mouth was situated directly beneath its head, Cephalaspis was thought of as being a bottom feeder, akin to a heavily armored catfish or sturgeon. It moved its plow-like head from side to side, Cephalaspis easily stirring sand and dust into the water, along with revealing the hiding places of its prey. 
Osteostrasi were among the most advanced of all known agnathans. This is due to the development of paired fins, and their complicated cranial anatomy.